you develop something uh you know meaningful something that is novel and meaningful at the same time uh you have to introduce it to the market you specify value proposition and then uh you hope that some uh customers your target customers adopt that product or service that they actually buy it and use it so what uh do we have to keep in mind uh what sort of uh, let's say product service characteristics uh, should we keep in mind in order for that something that we developed gets adopted uh, by our target customers? That's a great question. Uh, uh, th th that's really a great question because uh, the mistake that a lot of people make is that they focus only on how much additional value that we are offering over some alternative that the customer has. And that, that is obviously fundamental because if you don't offer uh, some advantage relative to what they're currently doing or what they could be doing, there's no reason for them to buy your product or service, right? So that's number one. But there are four other things that you have to uh, be concerned about. So the first one is uh, complexity. And, and this is, by the way, if you want to look it up, uh, Rogers has summarized these uh, very well. Uh, but the uh, second thing, uh, uh, apart from the advantage that you offer, you have to look at complexity. How complex is the product or service? How complicated is it? How confusing is it? So how complex is it uh, to understand what the product is or the service is that you're offering? And, you know, I've been working with some startup companies um, actually as recently as yesterday. The Biggest challenge they have is articulating what exactly is the product. And I don't want to get into too much detail here, but they go off into technology. Oh, we can do X, Y, Z. We can do this, that, and the other. And we can link up these databases. And the, they just keep talking about what they can do, but they don't explain what exactly is the product. Is it hardware? Is it software? Is it a combination of the two? Um, what are you selling? What are you trying? What, what are you going to uh, try to get some money uh, from customers for? Uh, is it uh, the uh, hardware? Or is it hardware as a service? Is it software or package? Or um, what are you selling? Even that is not very clear. So if you make your product or offering very complex to understand what is it that you're doing, then it's like customers are going to say, well, sounds good, but I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Go away. Um, I don't have time for you. So you have to make your product or service offering very simple to understand. Uh, it may require a lot of technology at the back end, no problem, but the offering should be very simple to understand, number one. And the other aspect of complexity is how difficult is it to use? So let's say uh, you've come up with, let's say, some software or some algorithm or whatever. How easy or difficult is it for customers to use that product? Because if it's going to be hard to use, it's not going to be received very well by customers, obviously. Yeah? So this is something that a lot of people don't appreciate. So, uh, so, so far, we've talked about two things, how much relative advantage your innovation offers over next best alternative. Number two, how complex your offering is and how complex it is to use. Number three is, again, this is the least appreciated uh, uh, factor. It's called compatibility. And you have to ask the question, how compatible uh, is your offering uh, compared to what the customer's currently doing. So here, let's say a customer's accustomed to doing some task in a certain way. Now, if your innovation is going to require the customer to throw away that uh, uh, process completely and do it completely differently, well, that's going to be a problem. But on the other hand, if you've got an innovation that can just 
tack on to what they're doing right now. Just make a little tweak here. Uh, you don't have to change any um, machines or any instruments. Uh, you just have to sort of, you know, do one little tweak and then all of a sudden the benefits come in. That's going to be received uh, very well. So how compatible is it with your current tasks uh, that the customer does? Um, uh, and at the consumer level, I, I know you're not too interested in the consumer level, but uh, at the consumer level, uh, uh, is it compatible with their value system? Uh, do they do they think that's a good thing to do or not? But basically, I think the main thing you want to keep in mind is compatibility with their current way of doing things is always helpful, unless you have a massive innovation uh, that gives you so much advantage that con consumers or customers say, okay, fine, There's, I can save 50% a cost so I can double my profits. Okay, fine, I'll change how I do things. But most innovations don't fall there. So compatibility becomes very important. And a couple other things. One is trialability. So if you come up with a product or a service that a customer can easily try out, then they're more likely to adopt it. They're more likely to buy it eventually because they can try it out and reassure themselves that this is not fluff. This is real, and uh, once they see the benefits, once they see the cost reduction, once they see the safety, once they see what new things they can do, they're much more likely to adopt it. So, uh, you know, that is important. And then there's a second reason why trialability is important. It's not just because it reduces risk, but second reason is when you give something nice to a customer, and they get some value out of it, some product or some service, then the endowment effect kicks in. Meaning once they have experienced that uh, pleasure of working better, cheaper, safer, then they don't want to let go. Uh, so the example I would give you is uh, way back, you know, I, I had gone to buy a car uh, from a car dealer. And I was hemming and hawing, what price, this, that. And it was a nice car, but uh, I, was, I wasn't sure. Uh, so you know what the car, de I still remember this. This is 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, I still remember this. Uh, so the car salesman said, uh, I know you're not sure. That's okay. Um, why don't you take the car home? And if you decide to keep it, wonderful. If you decide you don't want it, just bring it back next day, no problem, no charge, nothing. And I said, well, you trust me with the car, you know, I'm gonna take it home. And he said, no problem, take it. So I took the car home and I drove it home, obviously, the, the, the car drove it, uh, drove it around for a few hours. And I liked it. I didn't want to let go of the car because it was so good. So I tried it out and once I, had it in my garage, I didn't want to let go of the car. Um, so trialability is very, so if you come up with a software, if they can try it out and they can see how quickly they can do things or do new things, well, that's gonna be very uh, uh, beneficial in terms of buying. And then the last uh, thing I would say is observability. Like uh, can, can, people observe the benefits, customers, can they observe the benefits that the product or service you're uh, offering uh, uh, delivers to customers? Can they visibly see those? So to the extent they can see them, it is uh, uh, more, be uh, more beneficial, um, for, rather customers are more likely to adopt it. In a consumer context, observability is very, um, very powerful, um, and in a B2B context also to a lower extent. But what happens is, so let's say I get a nice iPhone, iWatch or something. What happens is other people can observe me wearing that watch. And when they observe me wearing that watch and it looks cool and I can call on the phone, I can do things, the other person says, oh, that's cool. Let me also get an iPhone. Uh, so, if the product can be observed or its benefits can be observed 
by other customers, potential customers, then it's likely to be adopted much faster. So these are some of the things you want to keep in mind. Go back to what we were saying earlier. When you're modifying the product, iterating between coming up with the product concept and service concept and the customer uh, pain points, uh, what you want to be doing is constantly keeping these ideas. You know, is it... Uh, is it observable? Is it complex? How can I reduce the complexity? Is it compatible with what customers do? Is it not? Can I make it observable? Can I make it trialable? These kinds of things should be going through your mind as you're trying to crystallize your value proposition before that. Yeah.